Hello again, and welcome back to my weekly podcast, Heartfelt Praise, Embracing the Lord's Love with Deborah Thayer McLean. This podcast, we're going to be emphasizing God's love for us and the promise of eternal life through faith in Jesus. We'll highlight the sacrificial love of God even before any of us turned towards him. First of all, I want you to think back. Think back to the day or time when you had someone in your life, or perhaps you're in this place right now, and you have fallen head over heels in love with this person. You love them more than anything else in the world, and you desire to demonstrate your love to them. What did you do to show them your love? Did you do anything out of your character to prove your love? How did you sacrifice for that person? Did you sacrifice your time and spend time with them? Did you sacrifice your finances when you did things like buying gifts and going out for dinner? Did you sacrifice any lifestyle that you would usually do because you knew the other person didn't like it? Did you give up on friends so that you could be with this one person? The Father gave us his Son. Jesus gave his time, and he humbled himself as a man and lived among us. Jesus gave his life. He literally loved us to death. He temporarily gave up his glory when he left his throne. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. 1 John 4, 9-11 through 11 in the NIV reads like this. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Chapter 1, verse 4 tells us, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. God loves us so much that before the creation of the world, He had already made a plan to show his great love for us. He knew that we would need to be rescued, that we would need a way out of the darkness that we are in, and we would need a bridge to breach the vast gap that had separated us from him. So he provided a way because his love is so great. Not only did he choose to love us before the foundations of the world, he also chose to love us while we were still sinners. Romans 5 verse 8, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Do you realize that because God loved us while we were still sinners, we were basically his enemy? James chapter 4, verse 4, it says, You adulterous people, 
Don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. We were all enemies of God, and we didn't even realize it, but we were all friends of the world. We were all part of the world, doing whatever our selfish desires told us to, until the love of God reached down and pulled us up. I believe that when Jesus was enduring the cross, he was able to look down the corridor of time, and he was able to see us. He was able to see everyone who would accept his love and his sacrifice. Because he could see it, it encouraged him, and he drew strength and joy. In Hebrews 12, verse 2, it says, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The goal of this podcast is to shed light on the bits of knowledge and the nuggets that I have acquired over the years regarding God's love. In doing so, I hope and pray that as Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17 through 19, that you may be able to understand, that you would grasp the power of the love of God, that you would be able to get a glimpse how high, how deep or how wide his love for you truly is. Somehow you may be able to get a glimpse and proclaim, as David did in the Psalms, his unending love, his unfailing love that reaches as high as the heavens. I pray that you will be able to rest in that love. Jesus' love for us is so great. It is beyond anything that we could ever repay. His only request is that we love him in return. How do you show your love for the Lord? How do you show your gratitude for all that he has done for you? If you have listened to my other podcast, you would know that I love to imagine myself in other circumstances to get a different perspective on scripture. Today, I want you to imagine yourself in a hospital bed. You have been told by your doctor the only way for you to live is if you received a heart transplant. Your type is rare, so that makes it almost impossible for you to receive a heart transplant. As you lay in bed, your mind races. You fight between feeling sorry for yourself and feeling overwhelmed by the knowledge of how slim your chances are. Chances are no one will help you, and even if someone did, you struggle to accept the fact that someone would have to die in order that you could live. As you sit contemplating these thoughts, a man walks into the room. His physical physique is such that you can tell he's quite healthy. As he stands before you, he begins to speak, and this is somehow the conversation the two of you have. Hello, I understand you are in need of a heart transplant, and you have a very rare blood type. Yes, That's right. The doctors say my chances are very slim, if at all. Well, I have the same blood type, and I have already arranged for the doctors to give you my heart. Now, your mind is spinning. What did he just say? Why would he do such a thing? But before you can say another word, the man speaks again. You may not know me very well, but I have known and loved you since you were born. When I heard that you needed a heart, 
I knew I could help. Since I love you, I chose to do this for you. I only ask that you love me in return. The man turns and leaves abruptly without waiting for your response. When you awake from surgery, you can feel the new, strong heart beating in your chest, and the words echo through your mind from the man who visited you. I only ask that you love me in return. How would you show your love? I know if someone gave me a heart transplant, I would tell everybody that I am alive because this person gave me his heart. Jesus' only request is that we love him in return. Jesus also said if we love him, we would do as he commands. What did he command, you might ask? To go and tell the world what he has done and to love each other as Christ loved us and gave his life for us. So now, go into the day. Tell others about his amazing love that you have experienced. Tell others about this heart transplant that you received in love upon everybody. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what they've done to you. You need to love them anyway. That will show that you are thankful and that you love Jesus for the sacrifice that he paid on your behalf. Lord, As I close out this podcast, I want to say thank you. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for giving us that heart transplant. That You have changed our heart of stone into a heart of flesh and a heart that loves you. Holy Spirit, bring us to the mirror and have us examine our hearts before you. How are we showing our love to you? Ignite the love in our heart to burn brighter for you again. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you have not experienced this love of God, it's very easy, and it's a free gift. In Romans 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us has sinned in some way. And in Romans 6, verse 23, it also tells us that the wages, the price for sin is death. And in Romans 6, verse 23, it says the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus, he paid the price, the wage for our sins, and he's giving us a free gift. All we need to is accept it. Romans 10, verses 9 and 13, that if you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it's quite simple. Acknowledge that you have sinned. Ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. Accept his forgiveness. Believe that Jesus is his son and he came and died for you. Believe that in your heart. And you can now accept the free gift of God. Don't wait to change your life to be good enough for God. God gives us a gift, and once we have received his gift, living in a way that we pray, we talk to the Lord, we read our scriptures, your love for the Lord will grow, and that will change the way you live. If the podcast has helped you or encouraged you in any way, please share it with a friend, Subscribe to it, like it, 
Help me get the news out there about God and His amazing love. And join me next week as we dive in again to more of God's amazing love.